ago this month at 4800 San Jacinto in Houston, Texas, this man refused to take a step. For the past year, he's been virtually incarcerated in this country. He's undergone all of this for the obvious reason that he didn't have the courage to fight such as Joe Fraser, Jerry Quarry, and Jimmy you, Ellis. Why would you say that? I didn't have the courage to fight uh, Joe Frazier and, and Jimmy Ellis and Jerry Quarry. I mean, why would you say that? I mean, you know I've never showed no fear of nobody. And why would you, uh, as many times as you have came to my fights, knowing you had money bet on other people, I beat them. <laughs> I mean, why would you, seriously, I mean, why would you sit here on television and, and talk about uh, me being a Fred or Jerry Carr or Joe Frazier. I mean, that's wrong. I mean, we just don't get along no kind of way. And you've been spreading that kind of gospel at every college yeah, campus every in college this country. I go to every college that I go to. Everybody asks me about Howard Cosell. Why is it that you and Howard Cosell can't get along? And my answer is we just don't get along. I mean, you just talk a lot of stuff that don't make sense. I mean, why would you open up the show and uh, uh, you told me you would ask me a few nice questions. Why would you open up the show talking about I'm afraid of Joe Frazier and Jerry Quarry? You really believe that they have a chance against me? Well, I think... You come to all of my fights. You follow me all over the world. Germany, London, Canada. And why, and, 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 and you, I see you at ringside talking about these homemade champions. Now, do you really believe they could beat me? I'll answer that question in a moment. I first want to document your record. You were troubled by a less than mediocre southpaw named Mildenberger I in Germany. You showed me nothing against Chavallo, relying upon the what fact that I he gave you, you water on the knees with low You've blow up on You've never seen me hurt a beat. What you mean I didn't show you nothing? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the kind of appreciation I get from you, from you coming all over the world. The, the company wouldn't pay your way to these countries for nothing. I, if I wasn't fighting so regularly, you wouldn't have gotten to see the world. And now you're going to down me because I'm not fighting and talk about, uh, I, I got trouble with these boys. I beat those boys easy. Now, wait a minute. This marvelous wristwatch. What were you frightened of? I wasn't going to hit you. Why did you move? I mean, why would you jump over here? Uh, because I want the people to see the wristwatch that oh. you bought in Frankfurt, West Germany. Yeah. Only because, only because I found the person who'd sell it to you more cheaply than anybody else in the whole country. Well, for once you... But, well, after all, I mean, what's you getting me a deal on a watch? If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have got to see Germany. <laughs> all right. My record is clear. I, I will shuffle again. Don't you worry. You get your homemade champions ready and line them all up. I'll be watching the television with you at ringside, popping off about how hard he hits and this and that. You let Ellis and Quarry fight it out and then let Joe Frazier meet the one or whoever the uh, homemade champion is, uh, I may say the Mickey Mouse title, uh, I have a belt at home, says world heavyweight champion, and for a man to be the champion, he's going to have to take my belt, and the day that he meet me, and if he beat me, I'm going to hand him my belt, and I want you to be the announcer that night, because I want to see you quiet, I want to <laughs> quiet you at once and for all. Ah, oh, you son of a gun, you've had enough fun with me. You know that the one guy who has persistently maintained that there is one heavyweight champion in this world is Howard Cosell. And I have said repeatedly that You're you could right. beat all You're of these right, guys. But you make a lot of cracks. I mean, you just said I had a lot of trouble with these boys. And you're talking about me getting out of boxing in time to duck Frazier and this and that. And I don't know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You don't look as broke as you're supposed to be. No, what you mean, broke? Oh. Everybody says you're broke. You got no money. You gave it all to uh, Elijah Muhammad. No, how could I give it to Elijah Muhammad? I mean, the government, the American government, took 90% of, of all of my money before I got it. You know that local sponsoring group had that deal called the Joe Lewis Tax Law. The fact of the matter is, the thing you've missed most over the past year were the steady vocal sparring sessions that we enjoyed on Wide World of Sports. <laughs> Well, we had a lot of fun, but uh, let's let the other boys have a chance and build some more contenders. After beating Zoe Foley, you know, no one was left for me to fight. So I think even if I was still fighting, it would have been good for me to step aside for two years and let them fight it out to see who deserves the honor to fight me. It's been fun. We've missed it. Well, things make it better soon. One, one more shuffle. Well, if I do the shuffle, you might have to scuffle. <laughs> We've done that, too. Good luck to you. Thank you.